I've been here for two years and I have lived in four domes so far. Each dome is different. This is student housing. It's kind of embedded in Davis culture. These domes, they're so delightful. Like on the outside they look really small, but they're actually really, really spacious on the inside. So this is Dome 11, this is my dome. I actually like just moved in this summer and I love it. It's so awesome. I have like the best dome mate ever. Kitchen area, which it's kind of nice. You can do dishes while socializing. And then behind the walls, the, the bathroom. We have like all of the amenities. Some people at Davis who don't know about the domes think, do they have running water? But we do, we have everything. And there's usually one room on the bottom and one room on top, which is the loft. Yeah, it's the kitchen, bathroom, room, room. And that's kind of all that consists of each dome. I think that this dome would be like, I, we could probably live like more than two people in here because this would be like a really pretty room and there's two rooms upstairs and yeah, so uh, every dome has a loft, and this is a special dome because it has double loft. Here's my roommate's room. You know, all you really need is clothes and a bed because we do everything else downstairs. You can't even stand up, though. Uh, well, it depends on how tall you are, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can sort of hold up the dome with my head. Um, but you know, you don't necessarily need to stand up. You can still do your workout routine or whatever. Um, but here's, here's my space, and I just put my bed here, and I was so happy that it fit. It was pretty cool. I have tools and clothes and um, musical instruments and things. So, yeah, it's really nice. It's funny to be in a rounded space. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, I hear a lot of people talking about rounded spaces, and they, like, they always say that, like, this, because the space is round, it changes the, the chemistry in your brain or something kind of hokey like that. I like sort of having to deal with not having 90 degree angles everywhere. You have to be able to be really creative about fitting things in places. And then you have millions of tiny storage areas. This whole foundation, it was put down before the top was put on. So like all the wood here was built before the big exterior fiberglass dome was put on top. So 1972, when the dome started, there's a lot of lore, you know, like maybe it was a class, maybe it was a, like a club, but there were a bunch of students who got together who built these domes. They had this big mold and the outside is fiberglass and they fiberglass the mold and then what they would do is they would make the foundation, a cement foundation on the floor and they would build up the interior and then they would crane over or put the fiberglass back on top. And so the orientation of it and the shape of it was kind of up to the person who built it. So they're all pretty different and they all have their own little flavor and their own personality. And they were built as like temporary housing for 10 years, but they've like lasted for 40 years. I'm an international student from China. I attracted to Dom's the first time I saw it, just like how it looked. I, when I started applying for it, I didn't realize, I didn't understand what's going on here. The first time I saw the inside was the day when I moved in. And I found that they're like, we have everything, electricity, restroom, it's actually pretty deluxe lifestyles, I think. So this is one of the dome that got more renovation than in the recent times. I'm lucky enough to have like a, a skylight. In the other ones, all they have is like a fan and also hard for the air to flow. Was so it a problem cutting a hole in the fiberglass, you know? It's yeah. just kind of a lot of work. This like the inside, the interior, mm -hmm. is like a special paint. And also oh. the outside, it's kind of like a protection for mm -hmm. a fiberglass. So it actually took us more than actually one quarter to like get the exterior painted again. I didn't make this shelf. It was already here when I come. But I knew that there have been domies that really like this way of hanging coats because there's like not enough space on the second floor. People take advantage of all space. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's definitely a problem to set this furniture so that's like straight. 
but then I can like store something that I rarely use, like suitcases behind them. Even though it's like pretty hard to arrange stuff, I still have enough space. So I don't think it becomes a problem. You fit, right? I fit, but this is like the further I could go without um, yeah. bending my body. So yeah. I don't really like work on second floor because it's really hard to move. I like lying on my bed. And I usually go waking up by the daylight. So that's good. I think there's something to be said for rectilinear housing. Like, you know, furniture fits more easily to the edges. There's mm -hmm. less wasted space around the periphery. But I'm really loving living in the small space again. I'm loving just like things hanging from the ceiling and like, hooks and shelves built into all the little crevices and just like everything mm -hmm. tailored to the space and the intricacies, the curved walls of the space. When I found the domes originally, like I was researching about cobbing, and I want to cob my own house when I grow up. So I already planned on like not uh, having a square house. So this was perfect. <laughs> everything sort of fits around the curves. Yeah, it makes it more spacious in here, and everything kind of fits against the wall, so you have this more open area. It's all built into here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it fits perfectly in here. Even the fridge, I was surprised. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then you have a bathroom that's just huge. Okay. Yeah. This is my room. <laughs> I used to stay in the loft last quarter, and then I moved down here, and I was worried about how much room I would have, but Sounds I like it better because I have, like, <laughs> a ceiling. In the loft, it's a little bit tighter because it does round up around the edges, but... Do you feel like you're living in a rounded structure? I mean, yeah. As far as like the ceiling, I love the ceiling. It just, it feels more spacious in here. The domes have been here for a few decades, so people have sort of over time found perfect little ways to set things up and then left them behind. One of the domies who lived here for about six years while she did her PhD was also a carpenter and she built in a lot of these shelves and did a lot of the woodworking and, and made it more functional for sure. And so the same woman left this desk behind. Yeah, it's sort of perfect. I, when I was moving in, I was like, oh my God, I'm never gonna fit all my stuff upstairs. But like, actually it turns out there's way more room at the edges of the circle than you'd have ever imagined. Do you find it for hard to fit the furniture in here? I think it's been fine for me. I just have a bunch of shoe racks here for a dresser, and otherwise there's like a miniature desk side table. And then these were actually here when I got here, and they're sort of like round-edged tables that fit really easily into the contour of the dome. Do you consider yourself a domey? I think everyone who lives here is definitely a domey. Just because of the experience. Yeah. You start to think of things differently. <laughs> I think the domes is, for me at least, a lot of it's based on the physical space of the place. So I feel like anybody who's ever lived here, whether or not like you lived here for three months or for six years, is you know some of it stuck with you. So. I think there's something special about the place, just sort of the nature of the physical layout that makes people uh, feel like the conventional rules of society don't apply and, um, uh, and things change. And that changes uh, however uh, people who are living here want it to change. Chicken. I'm not a really skillful person in like cooperating because I used to live in like a huge city. I'm from Beijing, China. This is part of the ground source heat pump. There are pipes that connect to underground because the underground tend to stay cooler than the outside during summer and hotter in winter. So basically that would be a really cool heat source to exchange the hot air from the dome. And it can save about 70% of compared to the usual air conditioner. <laughs> yeah, I'm so into music. You are? Um, yeah. I 
I've been really getting into living in the small space and playing with the dynamics of the space. There's so many things that inform your, your worldview. And I think like a huge part of that is where you live and how you exist.